Today we're going to go over what a tariff is, how it works, and how Trump's plan to implement a 10% tariff across the board may or may not affect the economy, as well as how some real world retailers are planning on dealing with this if in fact these tariffs do come to life. So what is a tariff? A tariff is a tax that is imposed on goods imported from another country. And the main thing that I think Trump is thinking about when he is talking about implementing these tariffs is he's looking at China, okay? Because China has always been the country with the bullseye on it with Trump because we do more trade with China than pretty much any other country. But putting China aside for a minute, let's take a look at a real world example of how a tariff would work because if a 10% tariff across the board was implemented on anything that's imported, this would impact things like cars, for example. So if we look at a brand new Honda Civic, okay, that's about a $30,000 car. With a 10% tariff on the car, the car would now cost $33,000 instead of $30,000. And so the idea behind the tariff is that Americans would be more likely to buy a domestic brand, a domestic car, over the Honda Civic, at least in theory. Although I would still argue that that Honda Civic at 33,000 is still gonna be a lot cheaper than most American cars, not all, but a lot of them. So the idea behind the tariffs is that it's also an incentive for these companies to make more products in the US rather than overseas. And it's supposed to create jobs, boost the economy, as well as bring in more money in tax revenue for the federal government. But many opponents to Trump's plan say that this is gonna cause even more inflation and it won't be worth the extra cost for most people because we're already dealing with inflation. So if people have to pay more money for the goods they're already purchasing at a time when inflation is already bad, this is overall gonna be a bad thing for the economy. And because the way our entire supply chain and businesses have been set up over the past 50 or 60 years, we've had a lot of companies outsourcing pretty much all of their production and labor to other countries. So part of the goal behind the tariffs would be to try and bring back some of that production and labor here to the US again. But here's the thing, over the past 50 or 60 years that we've been exporting all of our labor and jobs to other countries, these countries have had a chance to build up a competitive advantage and it's now a lot cheaper to manufacture most of these products in other countries. And that's why you see so many businesses take this route because it's just more cost effective and then they can make more money. More sales equals more revenue for the company and also higher profit margins because the products can be produced cheaper. I mean, just take a look at pretty much everything we buy, okay? It's always made somewhere else most of the time. You can even look at prestigious products like Apple products, even though they say they're designed in California, they are made in China. Okay, and they're still very expensive. They're still high quality products and they're very expensive, but they are made in China. That's just one example. You also have many other expensive electronics brands that are manufactured in China or Japan. You do have some high-end clothing and other brands and things that are not from China. Like for example, you can get a nice Italian leather bag or a nice Italian suit made in Italy, but if there's a 10% tariff across the board, then all of those items are gonna be subject to the tariff, regardless if it's made in Italy or China or wherever. If it's not made in the US, it'll get slapped with that 10% tariff. But there is an unfortunate reality that we all need to face, regardless of the cost of these cheap goods that we import, because this cheap manufacturing process has a pretty large environmental impact. And while this video isn't gonna be about that, it's something that's really unseen by the American consumer, because we we don't make any of this stuff here so therefore they make these things in other countries and they have very cheap labor oftentimes child labor is making that ten dollar t-shirt that you like buying from H&M or wherever and besides the child labor they have little to no regulations when it comes to pollution they don't have any problem dumping all their trash into the river or having overflowing uh, garbage dumps in the area 
doesn't matter. And if they do pollute, if there's any fine at all, it's gonna be slim to none. So this lack of regulation along with cheap labor makes it extremely cheap to manufacture goods in other countries. And that's why the t-shirt is only $10. That's why you can buy a cheap TV, you know, a 65 inch TV now you can get for $300. But let's go back to inflation for a minute because if all of these goods now have a 10% tariff on it, will it cause inflation? On the surface, unless people scale back on how many products they purchase, then the answer will be yes. Because if we see the same amount of purchasing throughout the country as we see now, but we have a 10% tariff on everything, then it will make everything 10% more expensive if it's imported. But here's the thing. When we look at the reality of what's happening with the American economy right now, we're seeing consumer spending come to a halt. You know, there's been a big spending crunch where people are just not spending money that they don't have to right now. People are pulling back on pretty much everything that's non-essential, at least the vast majority of folks are. We've seen people get pretty much maxed out with the amount of credit they can take on. Household debt continues to climb to new record highs quarter after quarter. So that's an unsustainable situation. So if we keep moving in this direction and the tariffs make things even more expensive, I think the reality of what's probably going to happen is people are just going to buy even less of this stuff. We're going to see the spending crunch clamp down even harder because people aren't going to be able to afford to continue buying all these things. Whether or not that's a good thing, that's up for you to decide. But I feel like this is the more logical outcome of the Trump tariffs if they get implemented. And this would play out simply because people cannot continue taking on more and more debt forever just because things get more expensive. Eventually people run out of borrowing power. As of this moment, Trump is saying that this is going to have a massive positive impact on the economy, but someone is going to have to lose when it comes to paying these tariffs. Because here's how the tariff works. You have a retailer that imports a good from another country and they have to pay that 10% tariff. Okay. But if the retailer wants to maintain the profit margin they have on that item currently, then they need to increase the price that they sell it for. Otherwise, they'll have to absorb having a lower profit margin. It's gonna be up to the retailer, and we're gonna take a look in a minute of what Walmart is planning on doing if this situation does get implemented. So you as the consumer, you can do one of two things. You either need to pay the higher price for that item or look for a similar alternative that's made in the US, which is often going to be even more expensive. And if you ask me, these tariffs would need to be a lot higher than just 10% in order to actually be effective and push people back towards buying American made goods. But then of course the problem is we don't really make anything here. So it would be very difficult to find an American alternative for a lot of different things. Take for example, going back to the Apple product. So many people love their iPhones and their Mac computers, including me. But there is no American alternative, right? We don't have any computers or cell phones that are manufactured in the US. So if there was a massive tariff on all these items, then what would you buy instead? You really wouldn't have any other option, right? One option I like to think about as a guitar player is American guitars versus foreign made guitars. And American guitars, if you're not a guitar player, are always way more expensive than foreign made guitars. I like ESP guitars. You can buy one of the cheaper models for four or $500 that's manufactured in Indonesia or in Korea and then you step up your game a little bit, you want to get a much nicer guitar, one that's made in Japan, that's like $2,500, but you want that same ESP guitar made in the USA, that guitar will now cost you about $5,000 roughly. So the cost of these items goes up substantially just to have something made in the USA. What's up kids? What are you guys doing today? We're going to our friend's house. Yeah, what are you gonna do there? It's it's sports. It's sports, yeah. Have Watch play sports? Play, play some sports. sports. Play some play sports? sports. Oh, that's yeah. better, right? It's better yeah. to play than watch. Yeah. Cool. Well, enjoy. You guys have a good one. Take care. It's good to see kids in the neighborhood that are not up to no good. <laughs> so the idea of the tariffs is that it's supposed to bring in more tax revenue, right? Because these tariffs are actually going to make it so that way the tax money collected from the tariffs goes towards the U.S. Treasury. But I think Americans are going to be hard pressed to find an American alternative to many different items. But the reality is if these tariffs do get implemented, it's going to be highly unlikely that it's going to be a 10% tariff across the board. I think it's going to be more targeted at certain items and certain countries if it actually does 
happen. Here we have a house that sold back in 2015 for 775,000. And then they listed it back in June of 2023 for 4.75 million and then lowered the price about 100,000 in March of 2024. And then it took all the way until November this year to actually get this house under contract. But that is just under contract. Doesn't mean it is a closed sale yet. But man, look at that. Over a year and a half on the market and only now it's under contract. The length of time it takes to sell these houses here is just unbelievable. You know, if you're living in the house and you know, it's your primary residence, probably not a big deal, but if it's an investment property and the house is sitting empty, entirely different story guys. And there's so many of those houses like that here in Miami. When these retailers pay the tariffs, the money goes straight to the treasury department and is collected as revenue for the US government. Okay, in 2024, the US government collected $5 trillion in taxes. So if a 10% tariff is enacted across all imported goods, then that would bring in about an extra 400 to $500 billion in tax revenue for our country which is only about eight to 10% of the entire tax revenue. So it is extra, but it's not gonna make a huge difference in the amount of extra money being brought in. And the thing is, we used to run our country only on tariffs about 100 years ago. We didn't have an income tax or anything like that, but the government was a lot smaller back then. And today, the government has gotten so huge and so overbloated with so many different programs and so many different ways that it reaches into our lives. And all these programs cost money. It seems like they always want to add more programs rather than take them away. So under the current amount of consumption and potential tax revenue these tariffs could bring in, there's no way we could run the US government solely off of these tariffs anymore like we used to. They can definitely make some adjustments though because you can bring in that extra 400 to 500 billion a year for example and then you can cut a lot of government spending or even cut different agencies altogether and eliminate them which is something that the Trump team is looking at doing and when you combine both of those then maybe we can start talking about saving a couple trillion dollars a year but right now all this is talk you know Trump so far has uh, enlisted Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy I never know how to say his name right to uh, clamp down on the spending and find different ways that they can make budget cuts throughout the government. But we haven't really seen if this is gonna be effective or not because none of this is actually happening yet. And the reality is every politician, including Trump, will say things to get elected and this tariff situation might be one of those things. So what we're all gonna to have to do is just sit and wait and see what's actually gonna be done at the end of the day. But Walmart is not taking this as a joke because they're already looking at what they're going to do if the Trump tariffs do actually take place and do come to fruition. Walmart CFO said that they would likely have to raise prices on some items if this happens, which no kidding, we just talked about that. But he said that we never want to raise prices. Our model is everyday low prices, but there probably will be cases where prices will go up for consumers. He also said that it's too soon to say which products could cost more due to the tariffs. That's exactly right, because we don't know if these tariffs are gonna be across the board or if it's gonna be more targeted and dialed. Of course, people at the American Retail Federation are worried about it, and they're saying the same thing that the opponents have been saying that we just talked about, that it's gonna drive inflation higher, it's gonna increase prices and result in job losses for a lot of people but we don't know that yet you have the footwear maker like steve madden they said that they're going to reduce the goods it imports from china by as much as 45 percent over the next year in order to try to avoid any financial impact because china has the bullseye on it even if they do implement this across the blanket tariff goods that are imported from china could see much higher tariffs as much as 50 or 100 percent even i don't know if this is true but this is what the walmart cfo is saying it must be true he says that about two-thirds of the items that walmart sells are made grown or assembled in the u.s i would think it would be exactly the opposite of that where most of it is actually imported i mean you walk through walmart I can't even think of one thing that would be made here domestically, but I would love to do a walkthrough with 
the CFO of Walmart through the store and have him point out everything that is made here in the USA. That would be great. Maybe they're also saying this too because Walmart has become basically a grocery store now. Well, most people use Walmarts to go in and get the cheapest possible groceries and obviously almost all of that stuff is produced and grown here in the US. So maybe that's kind of skewing the numbers a little bit too. But Walmart says the tariffs that Trump implemented during his first term already caused them to rearrange part of their business model and not rely as heavily on China. And so they're more prepared for an upcoming second wave of tariffs. But they do admit that tariffs are inflationary for customers and that they wanna work with suppliers with their own private brand assortment in order to try to bring prices down. Lowe's, the home improvement store, they're looking at doing the same thing. They say about 40% of the company's cost of goods sold comes from outside the US, including direct imports and merchandise from national brands. And he said the tariffs would certainly add costs, but we don't know on which items yet. So the same kind of thing. But both of these CFOs believe that they're well prepared to respond regardless of what does happen with this. And these big companies are smart. They know they can't just jack up the price on something tremendously and expect people to come in and still buy it. So at the end of the day, I think that some of these retailers could be the ones actually taking the hit. But then again, the idea behind the tariff is to punish the country we're importing the goods from, but in reality, it will punish the American companies that are paying these tariffs in order to keep their price stability in line with sales and keep customers coming through the door. So it is a dicey issue, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. But it's not just tariffs that Trump is looking to implement. Also, he's looking at changing the auto industry because we've had these EV mandates in place and all these EV tax credits and things like that for a long time and that might all go away soon. One way that Trump says he'll use tariffs when it comes to the auto industry is that he would use it to reduce imports and create factory jobs here in the US. And he also said that we're not gonna be spending government money on electric vehicles anymore. And this has a lot of automakers concerned because they've really put a lot of resources and money into producing electric lines of vehicles. And if this is no longer gonna be, you know, the status quo of what we're moving towards, no longer the goal, then this could end up being a huge loss for American automakers. So even though the tariffs on imported vehicles would make these vehicles more expensive, something that Trump is looking at doing to counteract that is to make auto loans tax deductible in order to improve affordability, which honestly, I don't agree with that idea either, guys, because the thing is, that's pretty much the same thing as the EV tax credit. The only good thing about it is then it sounds like it would apply to all cars, not just EVs anymore. So at least it's a fair playing ground. Like if you're gonna get a government subsidy, why not have it be available for every car instead of just certain ones? That's not really fair. But I don't really like the idea of the government paying for any portion of somebody's car because at the end of the day, that's our tax money paying for that. Right now, the current EV tax credit is people can get up to $7,500 in a tax credit for qualified EV purchases. That's a lot of money people are giving away to purchase these cars. But what Trump is planning on doing is to take back all that unspent money that's earmarked for these tax credits. So I don't know how much money's left, it doesn't say here, but let's say it's you know $500 billion. And then instead of having these EV tax credits available, that spending would be hopefully diverted towards something more meaningful that's actually going to help this country rather than just help somebody looking to buy an electric car. This would also get rid of the tax loophole that's available where you can lease any electric car for the most part and get this tax credit because a lot of cars don't qualify for the full tax credit if you purchase it, but pretty much all of them do if you lease one. So this would get rid of that as well. Elon Musk, who's also at the center of Trump's campaign here and Trump's new presidency, he's actually saying he's fine with them getting rid of the EV tax tax credit. He's not worried about the fate of Tesla without it. And I guess they've probably already received enough money where they don't have to worry about it anymore. Speaking of Tesla, I'm walking by two of them right now. <laughs> one here, one there. But going back to the tariffs, Trump's proposal right now is that vehicles that are manufactured in China 
or in Mexico are going to face much higher tariffs than vehicles manufactured in other parts of the country. And I already know what he's thinking here because they don't want electric Chinese vehicles coming to the U.S. and dominating the market, first of all. The Chinese are already looking at factories in Mexico in order to get around this, and by slapping that same tariff on Mexican-made cars, then it would achieve the same thing, making it difficult, if not impossible, to import these cars to the U.S. But the thing is, even domestic automakers, as of today, use Mexico for some of their manufacturing. In fact, as of the third quarter of this year, about 3 million light-duty vehicles have been built in Mexico, and about one quarter of North American production is done in Mexico. Even Honda, for example, they produce about 200,000 vehicles in Mexico, and 80% of them are exported to the U.S. So it wouldn't just punish Chinese automakers, it would punish anybody leveraging Mexico as a manufacturing destination. Even Elon Musk had plans to build a Tesla plant in Mexico, but over the summer decided to put those plans on hold, probably because he already knew this is something that Trump might do since they're buddy-buddy now. Now the other thing that could be on the chopping block with all of this is fuel economy requirements because as it stands right now by the year 2032 automakers must sell a portfolio of cars and trucks that average 58 miles a gallon. And the thing is guys this is a tricky way for them to just basically make an EV mandate because there's no practical solution to hitting those numbers with a gas-powered vehicle. So even though it's not a true EV mandate, it essentially is by default because of the stringent requirements and that would be the only way to hit that standard. The only other thing that automakers could do is to find a way to make hybrid vehicles that get this type of gas mileage regularly. I'm sure it'd be very difficult, but maybe not impossible. But the more likely thing that's gonna happen, just like what's probably gonna happen in California and all these other places that have these strict requirements coming up into the future, is they're probably just gonna put all of these requirements on hold. They're gonna delay everything and push it all back because none of these deadlines are gonna be realistic at the end of the day. So by now you should have a much better understanding of what could and might happen if these Trump tariffs do get implemented. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.